Hi everyone, welcome to the visual guide for the Jade Stoa Extreme. This is the new Extreme Primal Raid made available by patch 4.2 in Final Fantasy XIV, Rise of a New Sun. Killing this boss is a great way to earn your stripes, so grab seven of your closest friends and get ready for a roaring good time. My name is Mistech and I'll be your Primal Guide. We begin with Storm Pulse, a raid-wide AoE blast, and Heavenly Strike, a heavy-hitting tank buster. Be sure to cool down and heal through this as necessary. With State of Shock, the boss will physically grab his primary target. He'll then cast highest stakes, which will slam them into the ground somewhere behind him across the platform. This is lethal damage unless shared with others. Immediately after, he'll again grab the player with the highest enmity and do the same thing. On extreme mode, highest stakes will also place a physical vulnerability up debuff on any players that share that damage. This means to ensure no deaths occur, the group will have to split into two to stack with each grabbed player. You'll also want both tanks to be the top two enmity targets at all times to ensure smooth grabs each time. When the boss returns to the center, and cast unrelenting anguish, players need to be ready to dodge the spiral of orbs that spawn from the boss and move slowly towards the outer edge. One tank, one healer, and one damage dealer will also be afflicted with ominous wind during this time. These afflicted players will need to avoid each other or it will explode and probably kill them. The boss will also be casting fire and lightning during this time, so make sure you avoid the massive column AoE attacks. Next up, the boss will leap to the outer edge and release his tiger in the middle of the platform. The off tank should be ready to grab it and face it away away from the group as quickly as possible. At the same time, two players will be marked for prey and be targeted by three AoE circles that will persist for some time and apply a very nasty bleed to anyone in them. These players will need to run away to avoid getting hit and dropping them on other players. All players will need to switch to the tiger and destroy him as quickly as possible. The boss will cast Storm Pulse here, so be ready with those heals. The tiger also has a very nasty cleave that hits almost at the same time as this blast, so heavy cooldowns are a great idea. Next Next, cool down and heal through another tank buster. The tiger will disappear and mark up the off tank with the getaway marker, while the boss casts distant clap. The off tank will move to the opposite end of the platform from the boss, while the rest of the raid collapses into his hitbox to avoid distant clap and reduce damage from the tiger slamming back into the off tank. Next, you'll have a fire and lightning column attack to dodge and another storm pulse to heal through. At this point, the tiger will jump into the center and begin to cast the roar of thunder. Orbs will spawn around the outer edge of the platform and begin to move towards the tiger. If they reach him, they'll heal him up. However, popping these orbs will eat up your TP, so I would recommend players only take one orb each, or assign the healers to pop all of them before they reach the center. The goal here is to bring the tiger's health down as much as possible. The damage of this roar is dependent on how much health he has at the end of the cast. You want everyone in the raid group with as much health going into the next phase to give you a buffer in case you take some orbs to the face. While you're falling, make sure you avoid the orbs as necessary. Do not move your character into the outer section or you will die. Watch out for the circle and line attacks in between each orb pattern. Once you return to the platform, shield and heal through the incoming ultimate attack. This phase will begin with a tank buster. Don't forget your cooldowns. Next up, you'll deal with the moving lightning AoE pattern. Remember that the two sets happen in sequence, so you can wait for the first lightning set to pass, then move in behind it to dodge the second set. Immediately after, the main tank will be grabbed. The first stack group will need to make sure they're ready to move in across the platform while dodging the lightning AoE to ensure enough people are soaking this first highest stake slam. The second tank gets grabbed and you'll have another slam to soak up. Immediately after, the boss will cast Sweep the Leg. This has no telegraph on extreme mode, so all players need to be ready to immediately move behind him as soon as the cast begins. Next, the boss will return to the center and cast Unrelenting Anguish again. This one is a bit tricky as one tank, one healer, and one damage dealer will also be marked with these orange circles that will eventually drop a puddle. These puddles will grow over time, dealing damage and adding vulnerability debuffs on anyone inside of them. If any of these puddles get too close to each other, you will wipe. To to handle this, these three players will need to spread their orange markers apart while dodging the red orbs to ensure that the puddles are dropped as far away from one another as possible. An easy way to handle this is to simply mark up the platform and assign spots for each roll. Next, Ominous Wind will target three players. Make sure you stay away from the others during this time while you continue to dodge the red orbs and growing purple puddles. The boss will eventually jump to an edge and cast fire and lightning. As you can see, there's not a lot of room to work with here, but if you move as soon as the boss leaps away, you 
you should have plenty of time to find yourself a safe spot. Next, all of this nonsense will disappear and the boss will call upon his tiger once again. The two players marked with prey will need to move away while the off tank grabs the tiger. The off tank will move to the opposite end once the tiger disappears, while the raid stacks in the boss's hitbox to avoid the AoE and reduce that damage. You'll need to dodge a fire and lightning, another distant clap, and then a second fire and lightning. Next up, another tank buster, and the tiger will eventually return to the center and cast the roar of thunder again. Healers will pop the orbs and heal through the next storm pulse while everyone else focuses down the tiger as much as possible. If you're doing this in Party Finder, you'll often find groups using a tank limit break 3 for this roar of thunder instead, and completely ignore the tiger and the healing orbs, instead choosing to focus their damage on the boss. This strategy can also help if you find yourself struggling with the enrage timer. After the roar, once you regain control of your character, you'll need to dodge yet another fire and lightning attack. Next, you'll have two storm pulses to heal through. The next combo of mechanics includes the two sets of expanding lightning AoEs and more Gale Force markers on three players. Spread out those markers to the assigned waypoints and dodge the lightning as necessary. Next, he'll grab the main tank and start the double slam attack. Stack as appropriate to share that damage and then be ready to run behind him for the next sweep the lick. Another tank buster and another double storm pulse to heal through. Move into the safe spot for distant clap and then you'll deal with yet another tank buster. This next unrelenting anguish is the same as before, with players spreading their markers to the waypoints, while dodging the red orbs and avoiding all of the AoE fight. The mechanics of the last phase are essentially repeating until about 12 minutes and 30 seconds into the fight, where he'll jump to the center and cast a storm pulse that will hit the raid four times in a row. Then he'll cast one final storm pulse and hard wipe your group. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Up next, we'll head into the Sigma Scape. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.